humans evolved looking at the night sky for, for inspiration, for understanding, and I think there's a piece of us that is missing when we don't get to see that on a day-to-day -day basis. There's just nothing like standing under the Milky Way and, and, and you just feel the, the, the largeness of the world and it gives you, it literally gives your mind a chance to expand and become more open and think bigger and feel bigger. My name is Mike Kavarock. I'm a nature photographer here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming with a passion for dark night skies. But as I began gaining experience as a night photographer, I noticed a glaring problem coming from town. I met with Lorne Nelson, founder of the Teton Photography Group, to discuss this issue with him. I've lived in big cities for the last 30 years and didn't see the Milky Way one single time. And I remember when I went on a sailing trip offshore about 15 years ago, uh, I was amazed and became fascinated with the night sky and, and how amazing it really was. Think about light pollution in Jackson. I guess what surprised me when I first went out and did my first night photography was how much glow there was over the town for such a small sized town. The term given to this excess glow is called light pollution. It's defined as the brightening of the night sky caused by streetlights and other man-made sources which has a disruptive effect on natural cycles and inhibits the observation of stars and planets. Well, light pollution is, is light where we don't want it to be. Light that's not serving a useful purpose. But that's just for big cities, right? Surely Jackson isn't that bad. Even though Jackson is a remote location, has a small population, we still do have a light pollution problem. You can see this haze, this like yellow haze rising from the town. You can't, you can barely see Snow King anymore from East Gravant Butte. And it's a little bit difficult to see the Milky Way because it, you're like, oh, squint, guys, it's kind of there. And so you can see the glow of Jackson from miles away. 35 miles away to be exact. So how does Jackson measure up to other cities? This is a map of the United States overlaid with a map of light pollution illustrated according to the Bortle scale, a scale created to help measure light pollution. The white areas are Bortle class 9, the highest measurement where only a few of the brightest stars are visible. Bortle class 1 skies are the darkest skies you can find, complete with a Milky Way that will cast shadows from your body. Jackson is at a class 5, defined as a suburban sky, where the Milky Way is all but fading overhead. Is that good or bad for a town of less than 10,000 covering 2.95 square miles? This is Flagstaff, Arizona, also at a class five and emitting roughly the same amount of light pollution as Jackson. Its population, 65,870 people, covering 63.9 square miles. Even Sedona, Arizona, with a population exceeding 10,000 has better night skies than Jackson. But don't we need illumination at night? Besides astronomy and photography, why do we need dark skies over cities and towns? It would increase safety by reducing glare from poorly made fixtures. You just increase the, the visibility where you want it at night for safety's sake. It sounds counterintuitive. More safety from less light? Imagine you're driving down a road into the sun. You don't see anything but the bright glare of the sun, so you put the visor down to block it out, and all of a sudden you can see everything in front of you much better. The same concept applies to unshielded lighting you're much more likely to see the light itself rather than the deer or person crossing the road in front of you. With shielded lighting, and thus less glare, there are also fewer places for would-be criminals to hide. Likewise, with more darkness, criminals can't see escape routes or tools and are therefore deterred from dark locations. Bristol, UK put this to the test and began turning out their lights after midnight. The result? A 20% drop in crime with a nearby neighborhood reporting as much as a 50% drop. So less light makes streets safer, not just for us, but also for wildlife. But the excess light affects wildlife in more ways than just that. Wildlife are mainly nocturnal. I think it's going to really screw up their ability 
their whole lifestyle hunting if we keep the skies bright it lessens their ability to capture their prey which they would normally you know most of them are evening hunters it's not just large mammals either insects at the bottom of the food chain are lured to bright unshielded lights in extremely overabundant numbers where the vast majority of them die not from predation but from dehydration with all the excess light emitted from towns and unshielded lights we're creating a dangerous instability at the bottom of the food pyramid that will ripple all the way back up to the top. But it's not just the indirect effects of light pollution that will take its toll on humans. Consistent exposure to light at night can also affect the production of melatonin, a hormone shown to help fend off breast and prostate cancer. This is because your body's immune system is most active in the middle of the night as long as light isn't hitting your eyes. In fact, the World Health Organization now rates working the night shift just as dangerous as breathing in diesel fumes. As if our health, safety, and the well-being of our ecosystem weren't enough reasons to start minimizing light pollution, all this excess glow accounts for over $2 billion in energy use annually, just in the United States. That's a significant waste of energy worldwide at a time when we're wondering how to increase our energy efficiency. So some of the potential solutions to curbing um, light pollution in Jackson would be to install um, cutoff shields on the light fixtures that we have in town to direct the light downward where it's needed, as opposed to let it flood upward into the sky. The city of Boulder put in a commercial lighting ordinance and we started doing inspections on those. So big commercial parking areas, malls, businesses, etc. Their lighting wasn't offensive to the public, especially residential areas nearby. Well, I think the biggest solution uh, to light pollution in our small city is education. And I think that everybody would like to see the sky darker. They'd like to be able to go out and see the Milky Way, you know, uh, from their backyard instead of going out uh, to the Antelope Flats area to see it. You would think this would all be enough of an incentive to go dark, but for a tourist town, it only gets better. This idea that Jackson and the Tetons have always been on the cutting edge of all kinds of different movements, so it makes perfect sense that we would take this on and there would be huge tourist benefits. So there we have the economic benefit. The biggest thing that Jackson has to gain from reducing its life pollution is meeting Dark Sky Association standards and becoming a tourist destination for the dark sky, which people will want to go to, to be able to look up and see the sky, as in people from New York City or Chicago or places where you can't see the sky normally because of light pollution. The Dark Sky Certification is a certification um, put out by the International Dark Sky Association, which recognizes communities um, as well as uh, national parks and other areas that make a commitment to reduce light pollution um, at the current time and also into the future. Certainly ecotourism is big right now and dark sky would be a real plus. There are not that many cities in the United States that are designated as dark sky destinations at this time. I think it would be a huge thing for Jackson to take this on. What if we had that same kind of wonder going on every day? You know, you took your kids out and said, look at the phase of the moon today, you know, look at what's going on here, look how that moon is aligned with Venus, isn't that beautiful? You know? That we could be having that same fever and fervor we have around eclipses on a much more regular basis. I think there's a growing interest in the night sky these days. I think astronomy has been steadily becoming a more and more popular science. I mean, come on, astronomy has always had this wow factor that, that hooks people into science. I don't see how anybody could look up in the night sky when there are stars in it and not think of the incredible just distances and time and just overwhelming magnitude of creation that they are literally showing us right there. I run across these open places as if I were an antelope and needed no trail, only the wind. It is my good fortune, and through many prayers, that I can walk all the way to Yellowstone if I had to, across open flats like a river of wind. 
It is my good fortune to live in Wyoming, a state so empty of human diversion that we are a black hole at night on the satellite maps. We are broadcasting space, and we are broadcasting open space, and there is a silence to be heard in Wyoming, and that's what we are here to do. A place to counteract the noise and artificial light of those who have forgotten the night, the place of dreaming. The antelope are dreaming now. I am sure as I walk home across the space of dark Wyoming, reflecting back the sky of nighttime. What if there were no stars like in those mapped cities of night? It would be like seeing with no sight. It would be unholy, maybe natural to another planet, but not this one of antelope dreaming Wyoming into existence, breathing the notion of a state large and empty and silent and observant.